What's the difference? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, rather than hearing me blather this whole time, I'm going to go ahead and um, bring in... Um, you're going to have to help me pronounce your name because I want to do it right. I'm not going to make it up. That's okay. Uh, my name is Vinicius. Uh, my complete name, Vinicius Gubiani Ferreira. But uh, I don't mm -hmm. mind seeing people pronouncing my name in many different ways, and I accept them all. Yeah. Vinicius. Uh, uh, Vinicius. Yeah, Vinicius. Yes, I got it. Right. See, I, I have one of those names that everyone can pronounce usually, um, but I like to mess with baristas at Starbucks, and I tell them it's spelled with three Qs and two Zs. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's fun to throw people off. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, we're gonna we're gonna wait just a minute, just in case people are coming in because they want to see your talk and they're all excited. But um, uh, looking at your bio, though, while we are waiting for people to trickle in here, um, so you like reading other people's code? From yes, I, what I, I love to code review other people' code, uh, mostly in Python. Well, and quite often when I see JavaScript code, I feel like running away <laughs> from there, not doing any code review, but JavaScript code. And uh, just messing around with other languages, other code in pull requests. I, I love to see code uh, makes us learn a lot and help other people. Nice. Have you heard of this thing called Code Reading Clubs? Philian Armand's founded these about a year or two ago. I think not. I, at least I don't remember it right now. Okay. You might enjoy this then. So if anyone's wondering what I'm talking about, codereading.club. Um, uh, programming professor Philian Armand's, the author of The Programmer's Brain, started this whole thing where basically get together once a month with this group, and or you can start your own once you know how it works. So you get together once a month and you look at a piece of code that's been pulled off of GitHub somewhere. You don't know what language, you don't know what, you know, what, what the source is. You're looking at it together using different reading strategies. And it's, it's a really interesting way of looking at code. So when I saw you mention code reading, I thought, you know, I really like that. Interesting. I'll check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so another minute to go. So what's in the, I'll ask this then, what's in the mug? Like, uh, if you're going to get a hot beverage, what would you be going for? Mm, well, it's not a mug, it's a cup. I have water over here. I don't, I'm not sure if you can actually see it. But, uh, it, it becomes uh, invisible. Guess, yeah, my guess is you're probably having some coffee. I'm not old. Right now, it's what time is it over there in UTC? It's 5 p.m., right? For me, it's 3.30 yeah, so p.m. Yeah, mm, here, it's, uh, here in Central... U.S. It is uh, twelve thirty, so I've got okay. my coffee. And I'm oh, sitting morning. on that while I'm watching all the, these talks, which is always fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we got about thirty seconds to go, so I might as well get everything up. Um, and uh, you'll be uh, anybody who has any questions. I'm just going to let everyone know now. If anyone has any questions during this talk, um, go ahead and stick it in the live chat or put it in the um, ask speaker. You don't have to wait till the end. Go ahead and stick it in there. Uh, and then at the end, if we've got some time, I'll ask a couple of those uh, uh, at the end of your talk here. Yeah, that's okay. I think uh, we'll probably have some minutes if anybody has questions at the end, but uh, I think that's from my timing. I think we'll probably have questions. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, here is your screen share and uh, take it away. Great. Thanks. Let me just grab my notes. All right. So first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to be speaking here at the conference. And uh, we're talking about Python decorators uh, from zero to hero. And uh, let's go. For anybody who never heard about me before, as I mentioned a couple of minutes earlier, my name is Vinicius, Vinicius Gubiani Ferreira. I'm currently working as a QA team lead at Asian Technologies for a couple of months now, about six, seven months, something like that. Uh, Asian Technologies is a Brazilian edge company. And uh, prior to that, I've been working with Asian for three and a half years as a senior Python backend developer. 
And uh, like most people that uh, cold and low quality, uh, I think this picture of a guy cutting grass with a scissors describes pretty much it all. I feel annoyed when something's out of place, can be improved, uh, like there's a little shed in the edge that uh, you should probably take it off to improve it in any way. I'm really annoying due to lack of quality. I always strive to do the best as possible. Uh, every now and then I work as an open source contributor. I think pretty much the most interesting project that I worked on uh, to consider myself an open source developer was the Python documentation for Brazilian Portuguese. It was quite awesome to engage with people across the country and uh, with the same goal when uh, trying to make it easy for others to learn. And uh, among my hobbies, I like uh, craft beer. My favorite one is Vice. And uh, riding a bicycle around the park. Uh, I don't have a bike myself. I just use a rental bike that is available in my town. And uh, that's about it, about me. Let's talk about Python. And uh, here's our schedule, our agenda for today. We're going to discuss code, mostly code. And uh, it might not be easy for everyone, but uh, hopefully I was able to make it easier enough so that everybody can understand and follow along until the end of this presentation. And uh, we're going to discuss in this order about nested functions in Python, then talk about decorator, decorators, their extended version, then their short synthetic sugar version, uh, the limits of what can you, we do and we cannot do about decorators, and the real case of mine, which uh, motivating me into doing this presentation. And uh, all right, let's go. So nested functions, what exactly are they? And I'm so glad that you asked. Uh, in Python, this is pretty much for anybody who is starting today. This is the hello world of Python. Every language has their own hello world in different syntax, different formats. Hello world in Python goes a bit something like this. We have a specific uh, reserved keyword, which is the def for setting functions. And after we type def, we just set a name, uh, use parentheses, double quotes, and uh, do whatever we feel like inside a function, which in this case, we're just doing the usual hello world. That's about it. We define our function. And then after we just call it, uh, and type the name again and use parentheses. It runs printing just a simple hello world. Voila, nothing new, working just like as expected. And uh, this is the hello world where we start discussing about decorators. Nested functions are pretty much just a function defined inside of another function. When I type this into my Python interpreter, we can see that it didn't execute it. It just defined the function itself, which in our example is named parent. And uh, basically we have a function that executes a few instructions and uh, just shows something on the screen, just like the hello world previously. And uh, we have the definition of other two functions, which is first child and second child. They also print some string to the, to the screen. And uh, notice that we have the opposite order. We're calling first, second child and just first child, just so we're making sure that uh, we can actually notice, just not be a coincidence that ah, first child was, defi was defined first and so on, then it's going to be called first. And when we run this code, it runs very in a linear, predictable way. It just calls the first print, then define the inner functions, and uh, call the second child, and then the first child. And uh, some people might be wondering, OK, but how exactly is this useful, how this relates to the creators? And uh, we're getting to that in a couple more minutes. Just hang on tight. And uh, a brief intro about uh, nested functions. I honestly think that uh, 
using nested functions is a bad idea, at least in my experience of codes that I've seen before. The only good reason that I think it's actually good to use nested functions uh, is probably just to define Python decorators. And uh, we'll get in later slides how bad can it get uh, to set nested functions one inside the other. So whenever possible, uh, please avoid doing nested functions. So let's talk about decorators. The decorators, Python decorators, uh, the simplest version, which is uh, at least the long version, can be defined into something like this. We have a function in the, sorry, we have a decorator function, and it boils down to passing a function for another function as a parameter. And some people might be thinking, wait, is that even possible? And uh, turns out it is, but there is more important parts in that. The important part is we're passing the function, but we're not actually running any of these functions, at least not right now. We're postponing them when they are going to be executed exactly. So in this example, we have a function passed as a parameter, is named func, and uh, we don't know exactly what this func is or what it's doing. We just know that it's going to be called. So this is kind of a mind blowing. Twist your head around it to understand what is this function going to do. And uh, we, we have to accept that. I don't know. It's going to do something later. We'll, I'll think about that later. And uh, we have another function that's defined as say we. It just prints we to the screen. And uh, we're going to use it uh, in our decorator. So we have two, uh, after defining our two functions, we have, we're going to call the first function as a decorator. And the second one is going to be considered a decorated function by the decorator itself. So what we're doing on the next line, on line 11, we're actually passing the function to the decorator function and reassigning to the function itself. It seems different, at least for people that are new to Python or are actually not actually used to using decorators like this way. So once again, our function did not execute it, as I mentioned before. And uh, if we decide to check the say we function by just invoking it and not actually explicitly executing it, we're going to see something at least odd, let's say. Uh, the Python interpreter is going to tell us, hey, this say we function, I have a my decorator function, which is a wrapper around the say we function. This is kind of odd, at least to say not anything different, but uh, it proves that our function is now decorated with the my decorator that we just defined it. And if we run this function by calling it with the parentheses, then we can confirm that both the decorator and the decorator function actually executed. We can see that we have a before part, which is this something is happening before. And uh, we have the function, say we, uh, it is, that works like a, mi a middle part. And uh, we have something that is executed after that function. And uh, with decorators, this is pretty much the basic idea. We have something that we can execute before. We have our decorated function, and then we can execute something after. And uh, we're not obliged to do the before part and neither the after part. Uh, from my experience, most of the decorators that I've worked uh, will usually either go for the before part or the after. It, it can happen that we actually use both, but uh, it's not that frequent, it's not that often. And uh, uh, as I mentioned before, that func uh, that we are passing as a parameter, it is a decorated function. This is this we uh, that is being shown on the screen. So some people might also be wondering what exactly is a decorator purpose? And uh, the purpose is to modify a code, an existing code, for example, that we're not actually allowed to change it, but we're not actually changing the code per se. We're adding value, we're executing something before the code that uh, we're not allowed to change it. 
or on the other way around, we can create uh, a decorator and uh, execute something quickly to our existing functions. Let's say we have a ready decorator that somebody else built and we just use it into our code. Yeah, that's pretty much the main purpose of decorator, like changing your code, but uh, without actually changing your code by doing something before it. And uh, we could actually add several decorators on the same function, like stack picking one on top of each other, but uh, we have to do that same syntax, like a function that reassigns to it and then grab that new assignment and pass to another decorator and to another decorator. And uh, that's not gonna make the code very good or easy to understand, very easy to make maintenance later. So uh, to solve that, the Python community, I'm not exactly sure when, decided to create a new syntax for decorators, which is more synthetic sugar. So the short version for decorator, not the long version, goes a bit something like this. We have our same decorator from lines one to six that we've seen before. Nothing new here, nothing changed. But uh, our decorated functions from lines nine to 10 now have a new syntax before it. Is that symbol at my decorator? We're just using a specific syntax, uh, like I mentioned before, syntactic sugar, uh, easier way to call the decorator. And uh, if we check our decorated function, the say we once again, we can say that the Python interpreter say, hey, I have a method called my decorator working as a wrapper before this function you are telling me say we. And uh, if we run it, we get the same result as before. Thank God for that. Otherwise, I'll be passing shame over here live. And uh, we can see that it once again executed something before, then our function, and something after. And uh, from now on, uh, things uh, that, that we've got the basic of decorators, things starts to get interesting. And uh, you might be thinking, how and why in, uh, everywhere I can use decorators? And uh, the answer for that question is, you can use your own creativity to use it whatever you like. For example, there's a specific code that uh, I would like to execute, but uh, I should only execute it if uh, the user actually have permission to do that action. So you can probably add a specific decorator to check if the user uh, actually have permissions, if uh, the token he's supplying on a request actually grants him permission to do that. Uh, you can also, for example, check if he have, uh, if he purchased that product where he's trying to interact with that request. Uh, if that actually is available, let's say you're doing some maybe testing and uh, the person that is trying to access that endpoint or that feature is actually on the A group and not on the B group, then you can also use decorators for that. Uh, what else? You can, after uh, someone uses a specific method, you can write it to a log file and uh, be stored on a specific log system. So the possibilities go just as your creativity allow you to. And uh, I brought some examples over here to, uh, that I pick around on the internet. And uh, here's a quick example for that... Uh, we wrote a new decorator and we're not actually doing like a before and an after part. Over here, we're just using the function that is passed as a parameter and uh, we're running it twice. We can say from the method name, it says do twice. And uh, once again, I use the very helpful function say we and I decorated that function with the decorator do twice and uh, you might be wondering what exactly does that method do? And uh, turns out for probably surprise for no one, it runs, it just runs the method twice. We can see that it prints to the screen the we uh, just twice, print it once, print it, print it twice and ends the execution. 
okay, so what else can we do? Uh, let's say you have systems that perform mathematical operations like stock market or a calculator or something like that. You can, for example, create any specific mathematics or operations. For example, you can uh, return a number and uh, elevate it to the power of two. Then this simple decorator just run a function, which brings a numerical result, and run that same function again, multiply it, and return it. And that's another example, but you could do it for pretty much any numerical operation that you'd like. And uh, to wrap this presentation, I'd like to discuss a case of mine that uh, motivated me to doing the presentation itself. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm working as a quality assurance engineer. And uh, I probably I skipped the slide. Go. Uh, we have a specific test for application, which is responsible, a class that is responsible for managing this menu on the top left side of the corner, this hamburger menu. And you can see that it has a few sub menus. And uh, throughout our code in this class, we needed to know uh, which screen we're actually right now after clicking into this menu, because every now and then we're clicking once again in the menu and uh, reloading the screen, causing some error on the tests. And uh, I started to notice that some code was starting to repeat itself. And uh, that's a case where decorators come in very, very handy to remove this repetition of code. And uh, this is the, decorate, the decorated function that uh, motivated this presentation. You can see that it's a bit more complex. Uh, it has actually three layers of uh, nested functions instead of two. And, uh, but that's not of a big of a deal. It's still a Python decorator. The only difference is that this decorator actually accepts parameters. Uh, the previous one, previous one did not. And uh, in the internet, you might find this referred to as a decorator factory. I didn't know that name, so to, you might uh, stumble into that. And uh, uh, as we can see, uh, I'm going to skip to the next slide. Hang on. This is the actual code, one of the methods that was starting to repeat itself inside the class. And uh, the parts marked in red are the code that was moved to inside the decorator. And uh, we can see that we have the before part, uh, the part in white, it's the part that is gonna be passed to the decorated, uh, to the decorator itself. It's that mysterious function where we don't know what is gonna be executed inside. And the after, as I mentioned before, we're just saving the state of which page we are right now. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the decorator, it's receiving a parameter. And uh, uh, we're going to see in a couple of minutes, this parameter is just to let the class know which page I'm viewing right now, which one was the last menu that I clicked on. And uh, uh, as I mentioned before, this code was starting to repeat itself. The only part that was actually changing uh, among the different methods is this white part of code that is not uh, marked in menu color. And uh, let's skip ahead to discuss about the decorator. And uh, if you look at our decorator, we can see that the decorator have a name, which is menu alias, that is, gonna, is being used on top of here, just before the method that is being decorated. And uh, we also have two functions, which are pretty much wrappers to what's going to actually be executed. Then we have function arguments. Uh, in this case, is the class that represents the menu with several methods. And then we're actually checking on lines 11 to 13 if we are exactly at the same page that we just clicked. And uh, if that's the case, then we're going to do nothing. We're just uh, let the user know, hey, you're already on the page that you want to go, so I'm ignoring you for now. And if it's not, then perform the click on the menu itself, sleep for one second to let the screen load, then uh, execute that 
method that's passed as a parameter, the decorator function. And on line 19, we just save where exactly we are right now. So this is complex. I would admit it's quite complex for anybody who's not used to writing decorators or even new to Python. Uh, takes a while to sink in, uh, but uh, don't worry. This gets easier if you uh, get your hands dirty by writing decorators. And uh, some people might be wondering, could we break this down into two methods to call just the before method and after method? Uh, yes, we can, but uh, we had the opportunity to write a decorator, then uh, we decided to go for it. And uh, one thing that I forgot to mention, is decorator uh, is a design pattern. A design pattern is usually a convergency methodology for a common problem, like uh, different people that don't have any contact at all uh, came up to the same conclusion by solving the same problem with almost the same conclusion. So these end up being published as articles and uh, becomes a design pattern. So. Uh, most common uses for decorator are seen, as I mentioned before, is like checking for permissions, checking for tokens, like removing uh, code duplication, the dry, don't repeat yourself. And uh, don't, uh, don't worry about getting to know all of this at once, because as I mentioned, this is complex. And on a daily basis, you're probably not going to write decorators uh, a lot on your daily basis, you're mostly going to be using decorators, like somebody pre-built this decorator, so I'm just going to grab it and use it. Uh, but when you had the chance to write a decorator yourself, I sure hope you came back for this talk to get the basics of it and know what's a decorator, how it works, how I write this code, and uh, I sure hope it helped you. Um, well, that was about it that I had prepared. Uh, once again, I thank you so much for the opportunity for being here at the conference. And I hope you guys enjoy it and stick around until the end. And uh, if you have any questions or feedback, whether it's good or not, I'm available for contacting to any of these means. And uh, I think we have a couple of minutes right now for questions. And once again, thank you. If you have any questions, I think that's a good time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, so if anyone has any questions, um, Vinicius, um, put them in the, uh, the live chat here or in the uh, Ask Speaker room. And if you don't get it in in time and you think later, oh, I had a question, message them in the, message them in the uh, Ask Speaker room after the fact. And, you know, this course is awesome. Uh, Actually, while we're waiting to see if anyone has any other questions, I'm kind of curious. Um, when did you first discover decorators, like in Python? When was that light bulb moment for you? Uh, using decorators, mostly uh, on my current job, I started seeing code. And uh, I remember one of the first time I saw a Python functions, because I never seen uh, in Python uh, the symbol, the at symbol for in the middle of the code. I've seen it on top of a few functions. And once I look at it, I've seen a function with three of those. And I started to wonder, OK, what's going on over here? This can't be a coincidence. This is not just to make the code prettier. So I had to dig it up a bit. And then I saw a specific code a uh, bit spread into the repository itself. But I quite didn't grasp how did it connect uh, to the code, B because the syntax sugar of the decorators really feels like magic. You don't understand exactly how is this connecting exactly. But when you start to see, oh, this function is actually calling that function, then it makes sense. Okay, this is just something of the inner workings of Python itself. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think the part that I tripped over the most when I started learning decorators was the closure pattern. Like decorators themselves weren't all that confusing, but closure, the first time you see it is like, what am I looking at here? Yeah. Uh, do you know of any other languages that use the decorator pattern? Sorry, can you get that again? Do, do you know of any other languages that use the decorator pattern or is that more of a Python thing? 
from talking to buddies at the company and that and outside the company, I've seen that decorators are mostly used in web development uh, in Python. And uh, I think Spring and Spring Boot with Java also work decora with decorators a lot. There's a common joke that I've seen from a couple of friends. They say that Spring, Spring Boot is like uh, decorator oriented programming. Like you can do small methods and stack like six, seven, ten decorators on top of each other to do pretty much you'd like. And your method is actually smaller than the stack of decorators. Uh, for that, I'm using. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, I can imagine that would get overwhelming for a while. So it's it's kind of like the um, it's kind of like the object oriented pattern of extend rather than rewrite, but it's being applied to functions instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, interesting that it shows up in a very object oriented language like Java. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's also a good question for uh, for interview jobs because if you want to uh, to ask uh, if a person has some experience uh, with Python, you just hit it with a question like, "Tell me about Python decorators," and then you see so many beautiful and creative answers. Like, if the people you can know tell if the people is making them up or they are like trying to express with their own words. It's, mm. it's crazy, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice to see how people understand or think they understand about decorators. Yeah. Or decorators per se. Exactly. Well, the name kind of throws you off too a little bit. Like, yeah. is this just decoration? Is this real code or is this yeah, just that, decoration? It's not actually there just to be pretty. It's probably doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's not just wall paint. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you, uh, Vinicius. That was a um, great explanation of decorators. Um, that's the, the actual explanation I wish I had had several years ago when I was stumbling into it for the first time. So. Yeah, it looks like witchcraft, but uh, if you stop and read it for a while, then you get to know what's going on. And it feels less witchcraft. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, like most of Python in a nutshell. Thank you very much. And if anyone has any questions uh, for Finishes, uh, please post it in Discord. And uh, thank you very much.